Hi, I'm Roxy, and today I want to show you how I made this. The full process from start to finish. But uh, of course, with the footage sped up, otherwise you'd be sitting here for nine hours. So I'm going to narrate what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I'll also show you a few tricks I have up my sleeve and programs I use. I unfortunately haven't been sponsored or paid to say anything nice. Not that I would lie for money, I wouldn't, but just saying it's going to be candid. Um, before we get into it, let me just explain what this is. Um, this piece was for the February 2021 challenge, which you'll find on social media. It's just a fun challenge where you draw or paint fairies during the month of February. Um, there's art prompts like that for almost every month of the year, like March of Robots, which I'm currently busy on, Mermaid, Kai June, July Canthropy, etc, etc. I'll put a link to the, um, the list in the description. So for February, I had an idea to paint a fairy that had these helicopter things as wings. Whilst looking for reference, I learned that they're not actually called helicopter things. Uh, apparently they're maple seeds, live and learn. Uh, so, given that the seeds are from a maple tree, I thought the best setting is to have her in a maple tree. Um, if you look on Pinterest, which is my primary source of reference material, there's no shortage of visual reference for maple leaves and seeds, but I couldn't find good reference for the pose that I wanted. Um, when it came close to the right pose and angle, the model had too many clothes on, so I couldn't really see the anatomy properly. Um, I could have posed for it myself, I guess, and just worked off photo reference. I know many artists do that, but I've been wanting to check out Design Doll, and I thought this was a good excuse for it. It's a program I've had my own for a while. I guess you could think of it as a digital version of those wooden artist posing mannequins. Um, I always wanted one of these, but just looking at them unemotionally I don't really see how they're useful I mean look at that anatomy that's pretty bad so I downloaded a trial of design doll link in description it basically gives you the full program um, and it allows you to save but it doesn't allow you to reopen it so if you don't have the budget to buy the program and you think you might want to tweak the pose later just know that you're going to have to keep it open the whole time or be prepared to start the posing process from, from scratch. So as you can see, the anatomy is much better than those wooden dolls. And by the way, this is a really easy program to use. You don't have to have experience with 3D programs. It's pretty intuitive. So you just saw me there going through all the body sliders, trying to get the kind of physique that makes sense for what I want to do. The big head is a bit manga for my taste, but I wasn't really planning on the fairy having a human head, so I didn't really bother with it. Um, I did a fair amount of fiddling with the pose, um, and when I was happy, I took screenshots. I found out later you can actually save it as a picture from the program, so the screenshots were an unnecessary extra step. Here I am firing up Pure Ref, link in description. This is a really nifty free tool. It's basically a window that you can drag your reference picks into. Um, you can arrange them in there however you want. You set the window to always be on top and then you can have it hovering around your screen while you're working. Now I have a second screen so I usually put my reference picks there but I wanted to show you this because most people just have a single screen and even if you have multiple screens, sometimes you just want to have that reference a bit closer. So I'm doing the initial sketch in Corel Painter. It's my favorite application for drawing. Not so much for painting, because with painting you frequently need to change the size of the brush. And Painter is really laggy with quick brush size changes. But for drawing, it's the same brush size throughout, so you don't have to put up with that lag. You'll see I've been pulling in various reference for things. Um, I almost never copy reference exactly. You don't really get perfect reference anyway. It's never exactly at the right angle with the right lighting. So you have to wing it, which I think is good. 
Um, if all we're doing is copying what we see, is it really art? In my mind, not really. I think copying from reference is good um, as practice. As artists, we should constantly be doing studies like that. But when it comes to an actual project, as I said, you don't get perfect reference. So if that's what you're relying on, you're hamstringing yourself. You're going to be frightened to just put abstract shapes down on the canvas and mold it to your imagination. And that, to me, is true art. At this point, I'm looking at the drawing and realizing the pose is problematic. Uh, that looks like an uncomfortable way to be crouching. My hamstrings are sore just looking at it. So uh, I went into Design Doll and started from scratch. Like an idiot, I forgot to record it. So here you just see me pulling in the new pose. And then I realize the pose is back to front. So I go out and mirror it. I just use Windows Photo Tool for that. Um, I consider starting the sketch over, but I'm basically satisfied with the branches and the wing position, so I just erase the fairy and quickly sketch in the new pose. Decided to swivel the pose a bit here. If you find something that needs a slight tweak like this, go ahead, lasso something, swivel it around, resize it, liquefy it. That's not cheating. Don't be afraid to use digital tools provided by the program. I mean, if you pull in a photo, slap on a filter and call it done, well, that's a bit cheaty. <laughs> but selecting something, adjusting it, well, that's just a perk digital artists have. I decided the sketch was looking a bit messy, so I'm just cleaning it up a bit. Here I've pulled in a reference pick that I like the colors of. And I'm just eye-dropping the colors and painting them on a separate layer to use as a palette. You'll see me doing this pretty quick. Um, that's because I've mapped one of the buttons on the stylus to Alt plus click. That way I can pull colors um, from anywhere and immediately have it on my brush. It really saves a lot of time in painting, I think, and it feels more organic, like I'm dipping my brush in a paint well. Before I move over to Paintstorm Studio, I'm just using a big soft brush to slap the colors onto the canvas in the general area that I want them. In this way, I've actually made the whole canvas my palette and can eye drop from all over to get what I want. Here I've exported the image from Corel Painter as a PSD and pulled it into Paintstorm Studio. It's a format they share, so easy to share work between the programs that way, even if you don't own Photoshop. So at this point I'm using Paintstorm Studio for painting because, as I hinted at earlier, if you're constantly resizing the brush in Corel Painter, you're going to visibly age. Um, Paintstorm Studio is only $20. I got it for 10 on a Black Friday sale and there's no brush resize lag. The other thing it does really well is the brush cursor ghost shows the actual shape of the brush uh, while you're working with it and it swivels around in real time based on the direction that the stylus is being dragged in. I've seen Critter, which is free, can do that too. As far as I know, Photoshop can't. I think Photoshop shows the shape but doesn't swivel it around. The shape is static. Um, disclaimer, this may have changed. I have an old version of Photoshop because I refuse to rent software, especially when they don't have regional pricing. Um, if someone on the latest version of CC can confirm in the comments, I'd appreciate that. So I don't really have reference for this tree. I'm just putting shapes down and adjusting them until they look good on the canvas and still resembles a tree. Same with the leaves. I have maple leaf reference on my second monitor. But none are in the shape or lighting that I want. So I'm just searching with the brush till I get something that looks plausible. Working on the head here a bit, I sort of wanted it to look like a seed pod mated with an insect. Um, looking a bit alien here, but then insects usually do. I'm giving the eye a touch of the same color as the maple leaves to try and tie it in with the flora a bit more. I really want it to look like this fairy is somewhat part of, somewhat caretaker of the maple tree. I want there to be no doubt that this is her natural environment just realized she has really long arms. I mean, in the fantasy genre, 
I can get away with bad anatomy because she's not really human, so maybe she's supposed to have monkey arms. But there's always going to be that question in the viewer's mind. Is it supposed to be like that? And I don't want little things like that nagging at people's subconscious. So if I see an anatomical issue, I'll either fix it or exaggerate it so that there's no question that it's supposed to be like that. Pulling in another reference pick here so I can sample the colors to use in the background. It occurred to me that it's looking like this tree is excessively tall because all we see is sky. If we're looking at it from the ground, we could justify that, but at this angle we should really see more of the forest environment, even if it's just abstract. I'll work on it a lot more later, but just slapping the colors in there for now. I ended up reworking those maple leaves a few times during the course of the painting. Uh, it was challenging to figure out exactly how the light would hit each plane and how the light would affect the color. I think if you're adept at this, you can literally paint anything. Um, I've noticed that artists that come from 3D backgrounds tend to be really good at this. I guess it makes sense. They've been placing lights in scenes to get specific effects so many times that they can visualize it better. The tree was a bit easier to figure out because it's more monotone than the leaves. So it was really just a matter of having to imagine which planes were facing the light and not too concerned about how colors were being affected. Here you see me introducing some color abstraction to the bark. Some blues, some greens, some purples where you don't expect to see them just subtle additions of the wrong color. Um, not wild enough to look like a Phobos piece, but enough to bring some visual intrigue to the monotony. Working a bit more on the background here, I feel like it needs something solid, um, or more solid, but still blurry. I end up coming back to this later. While I was putting some sunny highlights on the branches, I felt like the tree trunk was a bit boring. So I looked on Pinterest for some reference of things that grow on trees, fungi and such. I wanted to have interesting elements all over the painting. Not detracting from the main subject, but just something that you notice when you look there. Here I'm flitting around the painting, adding a little bit of color abstraction to other areas, like, like adding some really dark blues and purples to the shadows of the fairy. So here I'm getting serious about the background. I decided to add some hints of actual trees back there. You might notice the wing is suddenly a lot brighter. Um, that's because I got up to make coffee, came back, started painting, and then forgot to start the recording again. So uh, you're missing about five minutes there, but no biggie. Just, uh, <clears throat> just uh, wanted to work on the wing at this point because I felt like at this stage of the painting, the wing was looking like the weakest link. Um, so detailed that a little bit. You'll notice um, I flipped the canvas or rotated the canvas a little. I actually have that mapped to um, my stylus. One of the buttons is to rotate the canvas, which is nice because sometimes it's difficult to draw lines at a specific angle. I often forget that I have that function, though I wish I'd remember more often. And you'll see here that I'm brightening up the wings even more. Basically, the thinking was that if it was hitting the sun, there'd be a little bit of translucency, uh, the sun shining through there. So I wanted to make that uh, really apparent. Went on to add a little bit more texture to the skin of the fairy. I wanted to make her look like she was made out of some kind of smooth wood, like maybe a nut, 
something like that. I'd previously blocked in the leaves with basic shapes and colors, but now it's time to work on the values and a bit of detailing. There I'm just adding my signature because I'm beginning to see the end. I do this on a new layer in case I want to reposition it. You might notice all those hidden layers I've got there. Those are just different stages of the painting. I work all on one layer and then I duplicate it when I'm going to do something risky so that I can easily get back to what I had if it doesn't pan out. Occasionally you'll see me add new layers like now um, and that's when I want to use an adjustment layer but then I merge it after I'm satisfied. So what I'm doing here is adding color abstraction to the leaves. You'll recall earlier I added some of that to the bark and the shadowed area of the fairy but really felt like the leaves were lacking. As soon as I started though I realized it would be a whole lot easier to implement if I desaturated the leaves a bit. I find the more desaturated uh, gray or dark the area is the easier it is to add colors from all over the color wheel. Now that the color abstraction is implemented I just go and brighten up key areas of the leaves instead. Just adding some hanging moss so that the interesting bits of the tree aren't all at the bottom. Now I'm taking a brush that I created actually for hatching. It's made up of a few thin uh, bristles spaced far apart. And if I use scribbly motions with this brush it creates texture. So I'm just going around eye dropping colors and essentially scribbling all over the painting. Sometimes I'll take the background color and swipe the brush over an edge to break it up, especially um, in the background of the, uh, the scene where it's perfectly fine for things to look less sharp and more abstract. At this point I thought I might be finished but it was late so I decided to save it and look at it in the morning in different light with fresh eyes had a little bit of a panic because I couldn't open it again. I think it was a file size issue. Uh, the file at that point was two and a half gigs and I guess Painstorm Studio isn't equipped to open files of that size despite letting me save it at that size. Um, luckily I'd saved a backup in the PSD format so I was able to open it in Painter delete all the hidden layers and resave it at a drastically smaller size. So that's something to keep in mind if you're using Paintstorm Studio 2. Anyway, so once successfully opened again, I did some very light fixing here and there and called it done. Could it be better? Yes, but it's not healthy to get fixated on one piece. I think time is spent better on new art, I think. So uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you're an artist too, I hope if it didn't at least teach you something that you didn't already know that maybe it at least inspired you to go do something yourself. Um, if you got something out of it, I'd be much obliged if you'd leave a like and subscribe. Until the next video, God bless.